always this way. The oceans originated life, erupted life. Until the day the first legged creature rose from its watery depths and made the first footprints, all life swam, and in an inconceivable abundance. The oceans were filled with hundreds and thousands of species of fish, mammals, plants, and bacteria, more than half the Earth's biodiversity. Barnacles cling for their lives, feeding only when the coast is clear. Other creatures scour the ocean floor, searching for food in their vast blue world. Early explorers report being kept up at night by the thuds of sea turtles hitting the hulls of their boats. These sailors said that flying fish would actually hit their rigging, sometimes in dangerous numbers. A large airborne fish could make an easy meal or knock a man overboard. Ancient burial sites showed the remains of large swordfish and sailfish, suggesting that they were once fishable with reasonable means. According to this archaeological evidence, fish made up quite a large part of the ancient man's diet. But the fish that were once speared knee-deep in water must now be hunted with lights and probes miles beneath the water's surface. Maybe we once assumed that marine life was infinite. The ocean killed us and not the other way around. But today life is running from us, and we still create new tools for finding it. And so we set sail. Not long ago, this very ship sailed into the northern frontier. It could explore the outer limits of the ocean world, where life exists even in the cascades of frozen land. The wine glass shape of the hull kept it protected in case the schooner got frozen in place. As ice constricted around the hull, the entire boat would get pushed up, eventually becoming too heavy for the ice to hold. A marvel of engineering. For hundreds of years, man has known the ocean by sailboat. An unparalleled harmony between humans and nature, as nothing is taken or lost. Here he made himself a temporary home, sleeping and eating as if in the haven of home. But out on the sea, man finds himself back in the jungle, in the wild, at the grips of an untamable nature. A benign seascape can become deadly in a matter of minutes. Graves among waves. Today, we feel nostalgic on board a wooden sailboat. Its creaks and cramped quarters feel like a Hollywood fairy tale. A passage into another time when the wind told us where to go or where to stay. But like everything else, the sea becomes less wild. There are less shadowy corners left in our world. Fewer surprises, more control. Our oily fingers dig deeper into the soiled soul of the planet. When diesel fumes coat our clouds, acidify our oceans, dull our minds, what will be left? There once was a woman imprisoned and forgotten in an old fort. She herself had lost track of the days and her captors had long ago left to fight some war or make money elsewhere. She may well have rotted away in her cell had she not heard that distinct sound one morning. It was as if the ocean had not existed before this moment and she was there at the dawn of creation. And she smelled the sea as if remembering something she knew long ago bringing to light the rocks and the trees and earth, all the cosmos wrapping around her in a wash of heavenly scent. She ran and ran and ran and ran for it until she could no longer, her breath in and out like the waves, her body the seashore. Some say she entered the sea that day and never came back, dead. Others say she became part of the sea and is still alive today, twisting about in the waves, encompassing the land she once belonged to. And to 
To this day, we still come down to the water to watch her dance. With instruments for introspection, we take gigabytes to store the emptiness, the vastness, the perpetual movement of something that will always be. This is not our world. There are depths we do not comprehend. Where do we fit in this bigger picture? Do we remember her correctly? Will she be the merciful mother, or one who scolds us for our actions? That's right.